What's the story with getting ghosted? Hey everyone, I'm Harris O'Malley from DocNerdLove.com. This week, we are going to do things a little bit differently. I get a lot of letters from my readers, my listeners, and my viewers about their dating problems. Problems that a lot of people share. So, in the interest of answering some of these questions, I am introducing a semi-regular new segment that I call Ask Dr. Nerd Love. Solving your dating dilemmas and answering your questions about love, sex, dating, geekdom, masculinity, and all the cultural issues that surround all of this. And this week, I have a question from one of the regular readers on my blog who has a really common issue. He's getting ghosted on the regular. Now, he is meeting women in multiple different ways. He is meeting them at bars. He is meeting them off of OkCupid and Tinder. He's even going to meetups and meeting people that way. But the dates aren't happening. His calls and his texts are going unreturned. His snaps are going unread. And he just wants to know, what's with all the no-shows? Why is he getting ghosted? And how can he avoid this so he can actually see the people he wants to date? Now, Ghosting is a topic that inspires a lot of conversation and a lot of hand-wringing. In fact, it almost seems like every two weeks another website has taken some dating experience, given it this cute Seinfeldian-esque name, and is now reporting on it like it's this new thing that's on the rise. And honestly, I'm a little uncomfortable with using terms like backburnering or benching or cuffing because it kind of legitimizes them. It takes things that used to be known as just being an asshole and turns it into something that you're almost supposed to expect as part of the dating experience. Hey, look, it's another obstacle on the rocky road to love. Life sucks, shit happens, wear a hat. But then again, at the same time, there is some use in having a common shorthand so that you're not tying yourself up in knots trying to explain what really annoying thing happened to you this time. Now, ghosting is the current term for what used to be known as flaking or just getting stood up. The other person just plain doesn't show up for the date and they've gone radio silent on you, which means that you're not getting any responses to your emails, to your texts, whatever. Sometimes this happens slowly, where you can watch the ratio of your messages to their replies change as it takes more and more time for them to reply and the answers get shorter and shorter. This generally is known as pulling a fade. Ghosting, on the other hand, is much more sudden. One minute, you're having a conversation, and then... He's gone. Now, a lot has been written about why ghosting seems to be on the rise, and honestly, I don't think it is. I think what's going on is that more and more of us are reading all of these articles about ghosting and about other dating issues, and we're talking more about it on social media, which makes it feel like it's happening more and more, when in reality, it's just now we're all sharing this information. The question we do want to ask is, why do people ghost? And that is the topic that has launched a thousand think pieces that have blamed everything from hookup culture to Tinder making dating into a literal push button exercise that convinces everybody that the grass is perpetually greener. And yeah, there is some truth to the paradox of choice where having near infinite options makes it much harder to pick just one, but that's not really the issue. The issue is that these people who ghost you were never that excited about you in the first place and just didn't want to tell you. And yeah, we can argue about whether the illusion of infinite choices has created a dating culture where we expect perfection right off the first date, or whether it's fair to say after one date, nope, I'm just not feeling it and not giving it another chance. But the fact of the matter is, is that we are in an era where people are just not willing to waste their time on someone they feel kind of meh about. Yeah, settling down means settling for, and nobody gets a 10. Everybody gets, say, that 8.5 that they round up because what they do get is just that awesome. But that doesn't mean that they're going to be happy with a 5 on the excitement scale. So, the question becomes, how do you avoid getting ghosted? And 
Honestly, once someone has decided they're just not feeling it, there's not much that you can do. After all, you can't really argue someone into liking you or make them feel obligated to go on a date when they've decided they'd really rather not. Yeah, there is that time where it can feel really tempting to want to call them out, maybe want to shame them for having done this, but honestly, it's not going to do anything for you. All you're doing is guaranteeing that you're going to get blocked on social media. They're already showing that they weren't interested in you, and they're not willing to really have a conversation about this, so all that's going on is you're kind of looking like an asshole while you try to soothe your ego. So, what you want to do is you want to try to stop someone from ghosting you in the first place. And to do that, you want to focus on the emotions. Interest and emotional investment follow laws of motion, much of the way that physical objects do. Call it Nerd Love's Law of Emotional Momentum. Interest can bleed away just the way that friction can bleed away forward motion and momentum. Without an outside force acting on it, that initial emotional momentum can bleed away back to being at rest, or a state of disinterest. There are generally two ways that this happens. The first is that the other person was never that excited about you in the first place. If you meet someone and they're not really feeling it, but they gave you their number or their Snapchat anyway, then the odds are that nothing's ever going to actually happen. A similar issue is how you ask them out on a date in the first place. If you proposed a date with, hey, let's hang out sometime, this isn't terribly interesting and the odds are high that you are going to get ghosted. So when you first meet someone and you want to take them out on a date, then you want to propose an actual date. Not, hey, let's hang out sometime, hey, let's get together, but, hey, I'm doing X thing at Y time. I would love to take you because I think you would really enjoy it. Having a specific activity at a specific date and time means that the other person is much more likely to show up for that activity in the first place. And a little tip, when you propose a date, propose one that's interesting, maybe a little bit offbeat. I could go for hours about the problems with the standard first dates, particularly dinner and a movie. And yeah, drinks are nice, but they're kind of plain. But a unique first date ups the fun and interest factor exponentially and means that the other person is going to be much more interested in going on it with you. The second way that you lose emotional momentum is that you're not doing anything to keep the momentum going. We all have a lot of demands on our time and attention these days, and it's very easy for a relative stranger to drop down the priority list very quickly. When there's no reason for them to be excited to see you, then the odds that they're going to decide that they're just not feeling it and realize, oh, hey, I've got to shampoo my cat, go way, way up. So you want to consider how to keep the emotional momentum going and remind your date about why they're going to be excited to see you on Saturday. And this may be doing things like sending a cute, flirty, maybe a little bit weird text like, hey, I just had this crazy dream about you and a koala wearing pajamas, so I just wanted to say hi. Oh, and stay out of my dreams. Or it may be that you share something really cool or funny that you saw or that happened to you, or sharing a link to a meme or a YouTube video that you really think that they would dig. Ultimately, the way that you do it is unimportant. All you're doing is finding an excuse to keep the conversation going and to flirt with each other a little bit. Remember, the key word is fun. You're not texting them with, hey, what's up? What you doing next weekend? Those are boring. What you're doing is reminding them that they feel good when they hear from you. A boring conversation will bleed the emotional momentum and interest away faster than if you had just left things alone entirely. Now, don't go overboard here. It is very easy to go from maintaining emotional momentum to poking them constantly and being really annoying. Nobody, no matter how much they may be interested in you from the start, wants to hear this. Hello. Hey, hey, listen. So as a rule of thumb, assume one text, DM, snap, whatever, every other day. If they respond, great, chat with them, flirt a little bit, and then let it go. If they don't respond, then leave it until the next time it's appropriate to text them. And as a general rule, one unreturned message could be anything. They may not have gotten it. They may be busy. Two unreturned messages is coincidence. There's still a lot of reasons why they might not have been able to respond. Three unreturned messages is a message, and that message is they're not interested. Things change slightly when we're talking about someone that we've met off of a dating app like OkCupid or Tinder. A lot of times the reason why someone ghosts us or just goes radio silent 
is because they've been talking to other people and they've decided to go with option B or option C. One of the ways that you can avoid this, especially if you are planning a date together, is to have a pre-date date. This is when you say, hey, I'm gonna be in your area, I've got a thing that I'm going to, but I've got 15 minutes free, would you like to get a quick coffee? Or hey, I've got some free time, would you like to grab a really quick muffin and just meet up so that I can reassure myself that you're not gonna sell my organs on eBay or something? That time limit is important. You wanna keep it to about 15 minutes or so to meet up, establish a little chemistry, and get them interested in seeing you when you have a proper date planned. Doing this works because not only does it cut down on first date jitters and helps everybody feel more comfortable, it establishes you as a person, not just a screen name and a photo on a dating profile. Now remember, that time constraint is important. It is a big part of why they're more likely to say yes to a pre-date date. This means that they know that they're not risking blowing an entire evening with someone that they're not into. In a worst case scenario, they have spent 15 minutes and a couple of bucks on a latte. I do this, it works wonders. If you wanna know more about this and date plans, then we can go into it in another episode if y'all are interested. And one more thing, one of the biggest problems with ghosting is that it's just rude, but it's become something that we seem to have deemed as just acceptable and part of the dating experience. If you want to avoid getting ghosted, then sometimes what you have to do is be the change that you want to see and role model the behavior that you would like to see from your dates. Yeah, this is a small thing. It doesn't necessarily work in the moment and it's more of a pay it forward situation. But in doing these small things, we make changes to the culture and that makes dating a better, more enjoyable experience for everybody, including you. Good luck. Hey, thanks for checking out the latest video. If you would like in on this, if you've got a short dating question or a topic you'd like to hear more about, hit me up. Either share it in the comments below or send it to doc at drnerdlove.com with for YouTube in the subject matter. If you would like more dating advice, check out my books. I've written them, you want to read them. Links to buy them are in the show notes below. And if you do, do me a huge solid and leave a review on Amazon and Goodreads. It's a huge help. If you're digging the video, then you know what to do. Like it, share it around with all your friends. If you've been really digging this, if you've been getting a lot out of it, if you feel like it's been helping you and you want to help support the channel, then consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash drnerdlove. Even $1 a month is a huge help. And honestly, I can't do this without the support of you guys. In the meantime, you can find me on Twitter at, at @drnerdlove. Follow the Facebook page at facebook.com slash drnerdlove. And as always, smash that logo to subscribe, check out my other videos, and I will be back with you with more tips about love, sex, and dating. Later.